So we started dating. I was, what happened? I think, I think in the drumline group, she was the one who was known as like the, she was the religious girl. It was kind of funny. So uh, I was going through like a bad breakup and going through some stuff um, right after high school. <clears throat> um, but we were still like friends because our friend group was still the same. And so uh, when I like was going through the bad stuff, I gave my life to God. And then I was just like, man, what do I do from here? And I was like, oh, I'll call the religious girl. And so, and so we started talking more after, uh, after that. And then we started dating right before I left for college. And so we did like the first two years dating, we did long distance. And I didn't even want to date him. He would send me paragraphs on paragraphs about how <laughs> I was gonna be his wife and I didn't believe it. I thought it, he was full of it. And I didn't wanna break such, like this, the good friendship that we had. I didn't wanna break the strong bond of a friendship that we had created. So um, I was really hesitant to even say yes to dating you. Mm. <laughs> but I'm really glad that I did. Oh, man, now you got a ring on your finger. <laughs> so there were, there were two moments, there were two moments for me when I knew she was the one. The first moment was um, um, closely after I gave my life to God, I was still in the other relationship and I was kind of like on that uh, like uh, pursuit of purpose, you could say, and kind of just like focusing on God and trying to figure out what to do with my life after everything. And uh, I had an idea and I, I told, oh my gosh, it was crazy. I, I told the girl that I was dating at the time what I wanted to do and she laughed at me. And uh, I was like a red flag, but she laughed at me. And, uh, and then I remember calling Rachel that night and I told her, I told her what I wanted to do because I wanted to see if she was gonna laugh too because I thought it was just, maybe it is just a stupid idea. And she was just like, no, that's absolutely amazing. That's so awesome. I totally support you. I was just like, And then when I told her, the other girl laughed at me, or the girl I was with at the time laughed at me. She was just like, ooh, ugh. And I was just like, well, nice to know it's not a stupid idea. Um, yeah, and then the other moment for me was uh, we had gone to uh, like a, a party. Yeah, we went to like a party one day. And this was close. Graduation party? Yeah, it was a graduation party for one of my cousins. And before, this was like before we were really like getting like serious serious she left me at the party she left me by myself at the party like she walked me outside and she was just like i just she was like i don't know if this is for me and it's just i want to take some time to, to really focus on god and see if this is what god wants and i was just like oh you are the one so she left and you know I was a little hurt and salty but you know and then she came back a couple was it like a week or two she like ghosted me for like two weeks after that. And then she was just like, I was just like, I'll be waiting, I guess. And then, yeah, she came and she told me that she wanted to date. And so I had asked her. <laughs> for me, it wasn't like a moment that I knew he was the one. Um, it definitely, I didn't have that like aha moment. Um, I kind of just took a step of faith because like I said, I just, I was hesitant about breaking a really good friendship with him. Um, but I'm really glad that I just trusted God, took that leap of faith and started a relationship with him because here we are <laughs> engaged and soon to be married. So I'm really happy. You say what you want, but I was in drumline first and you joined drumline <laughs> to get closer to me. Not. That's how I remember the story. <laughs> um, so we had been dating for two years before we ended up getting engaged and majority of that time was long distance. Travis was going to school at Full Sail in Orlando and then I stayed living at home in Tampa with my parents. So um, it was a good two years before he decided to pop the question. I was ready by a year and a half, but. <laughs> See, I told you she wanted me. <clears throat> so I proposed by, uh, so I called, who did I call? I called her best friend, Lauren. And I told her I was planning on proposing and the plan was we were going to go on like a picnic and it was going to be like because we were incorporating when I moved back um, this was when I was going to propose we were when I moved back it was like a transition because we were long distance for so long 
So when I moved back, we were switching from like being distant to kind of like making time for each other now that we're like close. And that was definitely like a, a weird transition because it's like, oh, you can just, we can just come over now. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Not like we didn't want to, it was just, it was just, it was just a transition. It was different from what we had been doing for two years. So um, we had incorporated like date days. So Sundays were our date days. So I just planned like a date day where we were gonna go to the park, have a picnic uh, on a Sunday after church. So we were already all dressed. Um, it was, it played out perfectly, she had no idea. Um, and there was like this nice little bridge and I had gone like three days before with her best friend and we planned it all out. She, uh, Lauren was gonna get like, she did get, she got like, uh, like white like rose petals and she like sprinkled them on like this bridge that was like over like a little river type thing. Yeah. Not that big though. And um, so yeah, after we just casually ate, you know, we had the picnic on Sunday after church. We went casually ate and I was just like, let's just go take a walk. And she's like, okay. And uh, <laughs> so we went and took a walk and then we walked to that bridge. And that's when I pulled out my little, my note out of my back pocket and I started reading and she was like, well, huh? she's like, are you proposing? And from like, my perspective, I was convinced he wasn't going to propose at all. And we had, like you said, like the most perfect picnic. Um, and then we decided to go walk over this bridge. And it was really funny because I saw the petals on the bridge. And as soon as we got close to it, I was like, oh, it looks like somebody got, you know, proposed to or engaged. Like, oh, the irony. Not knowing that it was for me. <laughs> so we go and we stand like in the middle of the petals and then um, just looking over the bridge and he pulls out the little note. And when he pulled out the note, I looked at his pockets to see, is there a ring box? Like, there's no way he's proposing right now. And there was no ring box in his, in his pockets. So I was like, oh, like, no, he's just being really sweet. Um, and then he started reading, <laughs> reading this like really beautiful letter to me. And I just thought it was like a really sweet gesture. I wasn't really taking it serious as far as like being in the moment of, oh, this is my proposal. Yeah, she just kept asking. She was like, wait, are you, are you actually proposing? I was like, wait, like, are you proposing? When, like literally when I was reading, she was just like, are and you proposing? And he wouldn't answer me, so. Yeah, I just kept reading, like I why? I just let him read. Like and just I was, listen. Yeah, I was soaking in what he was saying. And then I did look around when he was reading the note and that's when I noticed like my, my best friend standing there like recording. And then that's when I knew, I was like, oh my gosh, like, I think this is it, I think. Yeah, and it, it was funny too, because everybody, like other people at the park saw the pedals and saw me reading and then saw our friend reporting. So people just started stopping and watching. And I was just like, and she's like, do we know those people? And I was like, I just kept reading. I was just like, I don't care what's happening right now. And so, yeah, it was funny because people just started, they stopped watching and then I finished the note, got down, proposed, and she was all shocked and everybody was like, woo! And I was, it was uh, it was nice. It was it was funny. Yeah. It was nice. She had no idea, and she thinks she but, thought I was terrible at surprising her up until he that moment. Me. Up until that moment. He got me pretty good. She took it back. She took everything she said back, rightfully so. What are we most excited for about marriage? Um, well, for me, I think it's just spending time with you every day and being able to come home to you after work and eat dinner together. Um, I think that's really important to me. And just, I don't know, just being with you <laughs> and not having to get off the phone when it's time to go to bed. Like we actually get to be with each other through the evening, be with each other through the night, be with each other in the morning. I think that's, <sighs> I think that's what I'm most excited for. <laughs> okay. Maybe you could keep it. Kind of funny. <laughs> go, go. <laughs> um, <laughs> What am I most excited for about marriage? I would say is definitely not having to get off the phone at the end of the night. Cause you know, for so long we would call and then pray on the phone and now we can actually like pray in bed together. Um, it's also, I guess for me, it's the, the companionship, I would say. Uh, having that person that you love so much to kind of really support you and push you and motivate you to always be your best self. That's definitely, and I, I feel I've, I've chosen well. A woman who will push me. Love you. Love you. Um, how many kids do you want? You want eight kids. This is, no, oh. this is not adding. This That's is like, six. this is like three on one hand and three on the other hand. No, not six. I, I, I think three's a, three's a good number. 
I don't know. I think for the longest time I said two, and I think I'm still pretty set on two kids. Um, but who knows? Maybe we'll have six or five or whatever. How many the Lord bless us with? I'm still good with three. <laughs> we'll see. It's up in the air. Um, the advice I would give to our future selves, um, I don't know, I guess it's, I mean, I, if I could give myself like rule of thumbs, I feel like I would give my future selves is number one, I would say continue to keep God first. Um, yeah, that's the, the foundation that we're both agreed on. But yeah, number one is continue to keep God first. Number two, I would say is serving one another continue to serve one another. And I feel like that's something that can be hard is because it is kind of dying to that self in a way because it's not just you anymore. And I'm sure anybody who's a, a parent or already married knows this. Um, I guess the last thing I would tell my future self is to continue dating. Mm. Yeah, that's what I would say. As, as strange as it might sound, I think it's, uh, I think that's one of like the, the best advice I was given, even like in our premarital counseling, was um, just to continue doing the things that we did when we like are like head over heels, like wanting to like date. Like, what would you do when you're like chasing? Like, oh, like we go on dates, I take a route, you know, I get her door, you know, the old school stuff, I pull out her chair, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that's three, three thumbs I'd give. I think that I would just encourage our future selves to just keep going. Um, we got married for a reason. God brought us together for a reason and we love each other. Um, and God calls us to love everyone always and to just instill that in our future selves that you know even if it does end up getting tough just love each other always. Um, I mean with God all things are possible and so if we're ever in a rut just to like he said keep God first. Um, and to just love each other always, forever and always. <laughs> okay.